Good everyone and welcome to another Blender Guru tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be making a beer. That's right, all you alcoholics out there can uh, can bring it over to the computer. Um, so this is the finished result that you can see uh, on your screen. Um, it's uh, essentially a lesson in um, volumetrics and uh, reflections, transparency, and uh, all that stuff that can kind of get a little bit difficult. So this is the finished scene you can see uh, right here. So very basic lighting setup, and uh, and this is the uh, what the beer is made of. So we've got a glass, and we've got this thing, which is where all the froth is kind of built up, and this is the actual froth itself. And then we have the liquid inside of that, as well as some bubbles. So um, I'm going to be showing you how to do all of that right now. So go ahead and open up a new scene in Blender. All right, so first things first, we're going to make the glass. So you can go ahead, delete your default cube and your lamp. Now for the glass, we're going to be using a cylinder as the base model. Surprise, surprise. Um, now for the cylinder, I'm going to be using, I'm going to scale it down to actual real world sizes. So over here in the options, um, I'm using the metric system, by the way, which you can turn on over here. Um, now for the radius, I'm going to set this to be 2.5 centimeters which is roughly the radius of a beer glass and then the height is 10 centimeters which again is roughly the height of a beer glass um or i don't know what you call a pint whatever the, the glass we're making by the way is called an uh irish imperial pint so there's a variety of different ones you can make um so don't go dropping comments telling me i'm the beer glass is wrong because there's a hundred different types out there you can make whatever you like all right, so I've got the uh, I've got the cylinder down here. It's uh, it's now resting on the grid floor plane. And by the way, if you want, uh, you can also because look at the size of the grid floor in comparison with our, our glass down there. It's kind of crazy. So let's just set the scale of the scene, the grid floor, uh, to be 0.1. So it's a little bit more uh, sort of easier to judge distances. Anyway, it looks nicer. All right, so delete the top plane delete the bottom plane which I could have done in the uh, settings but anyways okay so we've got a nice cylinder um, now we want to use a reference photo now it's always good to use a reference photo for modeling anything um, we could model this glass just basing off our rough memory but it always looks better if you are using an actual reference photo so I'm gonna be using this one by Mike Rawlings off uh, Flickr had to hunt for these images for you guys. Make sure it's Creative Commons licenses. Anyways, all right, so drop it in the background here. Uh, oh yeah, you can get this image off uh, Blender Guru as well, by the way. Um, okay, so we just wanna line this uh, background image up with our glass, not the other way around. You want the glass to remain where it is. Um, so let's just go point, uh, point zero 0.087. There we go, oh, look at that. Oh, I already know the measurements, that's cool. All right, and I'm just gonna drag the top of the glass up to there. Now you can see it doesn't r properly match up because the uh, the image is a little bit tilted and uh, whatever, but it's close enough. We're just getting the basic uh, geometry right. Now you can see, if I hide this glass, the way this glass works is uh, it, it's, uh, it's biggest at the uh, sort of three quarters of the way up, sort of bulges, then it tapers off in the, uh, towards the top, and then it's got sort of like a waist here, like it sort of squishes in and then it comes out towards the bottom there. So a nice soft curves, kind of like the Coke bottle, which fun fact, by the way, they designed the Coke bottle to look like a woman's figure. Hmm, think of that next time you're drinking out of one. No. Um, so, uh, okay, so I'm just putting in the very basic uh, sort of shape like that. And then we got another loop cut right here where it's gonna taper inwards. Okay, now you can see it's not lining up, but when we use the subsurf modifier over here and uh, set it to smooth, you can see that it's sort of, uh, it looks pretty good. It's not too bad. And in fact, in my case, I'm actually just gonna make this uh, a little bit more extreme, sort of make it hug in a little bit more. And the base, I'm gonna drag that out a little bit. Um, that's just, I don't know. If you have a look online and you just type in beer glasses into Google, you'll see like a whole bunch of different glasses. This is the Irish Imperial Pint, and I find this is uh, 
sort of has a more extreme waist, which I sort of like. All right, for the bottom here, because we've got to close this off. And if you just use a face, like just hitting F, you can see that looks absolutely horrible. You get all sorts of uh, horrible shading artifacts. So instead of that, what we're going to do is we're going to extrude it inwards, all the way in, almost touching, right about there. And then we're going to make some loop cuts. And we're just making loop cuts enough so that those are squares, basically, around that edge there. And that's it. And then you want, of course, make that a little face, like so. And look at that. That looks a lot nicer than what we just had. All right. And then finally, we also want to add a loop cut just for this base here so that it's sort of nice and tight at the bottom there. And then also, you can see, if I hide this, you can see that the top of this glass here has sort of a little bit of a rim to it, right? Like so that your brain knows in its drunken state uh, where to put your mouth as it hits the glass, you know? Um, so for this, uh, for this uh, rim, I'm gonna add a loop cut, drag that up there, right, see? And then another loop cut right there. And now, you're wondering why I did two, I'll just show you in a moment. Hold your horses. We're gonna use a solidify modifier, hey. So that adds thickness to our mesh, right? Looks pretty cool now. Looks like it's made of, uh, I don't know, whatever. Uh, we'll set the thickness to one millimeter, all right? So that's, that's what I found to be roughly around about the, uh, you know, the thickness of a glass, about one millimeter, okay? And once you've done that, you can go ahead and hit apply. Okay, so. Now, with that extra little loop cut that I just did there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these two edge loops right here. I'm gonna scale them out. And then for this middle one, I'm gonna scale it in. And there you go. You've basically got that little rim there and you can uh, sort of tighten it up a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer. You can maybe even, uh... actually no, don't do that, that's terrible. Okay, so something like that, just to give it a little bit of an edge and then it's little details like that that'll help. It'll help you win prizes and uh, solve all your life's problems. Um, no, it just makes your render look a little bit nicer. Okay, cool. So we are going to use the reference photo again right now because right down here at the bottom, you can see that all glasses have this solid, thick glassed base. So it's, it's a millimeter all the way down, and then the bottom here is thick glass. And I'm sure. An, engineer or a glass maker or whatever who somebody's watching will be able to tell you why I'm pretty sure it's just so that the glass doesn't smash when you hit it against the table um, but every glass seems to have one of these so I'm grabbing and make sure you're grabbing the inside part as well not the outside so the inside and I'm just gonna pull that up to be about there all right and then I'll just make this because it's not perfectly lined up like that and then you also, oh, hang on. Just so that this one millimeter is consistent all the way through. I'm just gonna scale that in just a little bit. And same with this one right there. Okay, now for this, you'll notice that a lot of glasses have like a little bit of a dip in the bottom, like a sort of rounded off. So a very subtle effect, but it's again, little things like that that'll make your life so complete. So with this base here, I've just hit everything else. I'm gonna turn on proportional fall off, set it to sharp like this, and then pull this up. Like so, nice. All right, bring all that mesh back. Okay, now we should have, yep. We have that one extra loop there. There we go. Okay, and that's almost good. We want to have the thickness. I'm getting into details here, which I probably shouldn't. I should just get to the meat of it. But I just want to make sure that it's going to look good so that when I finish, people don't say, it looks nothing like the finished render. Should do it again. No. Uh, okay, so we can hide the reference photo now. We can delete it. And good to go. All right, let's do some, uh, let's do some rendering. Okay, so... Uh, the lighting setup is fairly basic for this, as I said at the start. Um, at the, on the bottom, there is a mirror floor, okay? So we get a reflection off the glass, so that's easy to do. A plane with, ooh, a glossy shader, how about that? And a value of one, so it's pure, pure mirror, all right? Now, for the back plate, 
what I want to do is I want to use a, uh, a texture. So an image, which uh, it's, it's, I'll just show you it, all right? So in order to add this, you want to go to your add-ons. And if you haven't got it switched on by default already, switch on the import images as planes, all right? And once you've done that, hit Shift A and then go images as planes. The reason you do that, by the way, is so that when you import an image, it's to the exact dimensions of your image. You don't add a plane first, then apply the texture and it's all wrong and you have to try and match it up. Okay, so we're using this texture right here and that is gonna look good behind the glass. And uh, down here in the settings, you wanna make sure that the material settings are set to emission, okay? And then click import images as planes. So now we have this big plane here. Oh, by the way, you can get that image again off Blender Guru. So this is a, it's a, a custom texture that I sort of uh, created using one of my own textures and modified it in Photoshop so that it has um, that look to it, okay? So with the camera, oh, we haven't even set the camera up. But anyways, front on, I found that a lot of like drink advertisements, they do this, they have uh, in the background, it's this bright light which is shining through. And then in the edges, it's sort of like this really heavy vignette. And it's really consistent with a lot of drink advertisements. Um, and it just looks good. Like with that light shining through the liquid, it always looks great. And this is textured just for the sake of giving a little bit of texture in the background. And I've used a warm orange color because that works well with beer and you know keeps it a, an analogous uh, sort of uh, color scheme. All right, talk about getting into too many details. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's go to the node editor. Now, when we use that import images as planes thing, um, it set the, uh, the strength of the plane here to be is camera ray, which means it won't affect any reflections or anything. So you want to go ahead and just delete that. And uh, when you do that, um, you'll notice that it's now affecting the mirror, which is good. And I'm going to turn the strength up to be yeah, about that. Okay, so nice and bright. Okay, so now for the glass itself. All right, let's call this glass. And guess what shade are we going to use? Oh, did you guess in time? The glass shader, of course. And that's pretty much it. Look at that, it looks like glass. Uh, you'll notice it looks a little bit tinted, a little bit dark. So that's because this is not pure white yet. So turn up the value to one. And now, ta-da, it's pure glass. Pure glass, what TV show is that from? That is Breaking Bad, yes. All right. Okay, now, uh, oh yeah, I just, sorry, in that little what I was doing then. I positioned the camera front on by hitting control, alt, number pad, zero. And that'll just snap the camera to wherever your uh, camera is. This camera is too huge for the scene. So let's set the uh, size of that. Let's just make it two centimeters. Okay, that's good. Now, having this wide screen, like this dimensions of this render would be stupid. You would never do that, okay? Because What's the point of having a widescreen for uh, 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 and subject which is essentially vertical? Um, so what you want to do is you want to flip that aspect ratio. So over here, instead of 1920 by 1080, you want to go 1080 by 1920. Okay, so it's now widescreen vertical mode. Or uh, basically most videos are recorded in nowadays, unfortunately. Is Apple working on something to fix that? You know, the fact that... Uh, all upload or most uploads now are recorded in vertical screen mode and it looks horrible. Maybe YouTube has to fix it, I don't know. But so many quality videos ruined by vertical video. Anyways, all right, so I've scaled out this mirror plane here so that it touches the edge of, uh, of our back plate there. Let's bring that back a little bit. And that's important because uh, when you do that, look, I'll show you what it looks like before that. Go rendered view mode. You can see there's like a cutoff. You can see where there's clearly the edge of the mirror and then there's the back plate. But you scale it up until they touch and look at that. It's endless and uh, it looks really nice. So that's good. Okay, so now for the actual lighting because we've only got this back plate as the light. We want to have some lighting uh, sort of on the front as well. So I'm going to be using an environment texture. Uh, so go to the world settings and over here on color, just click the little dot next to it and then select environment texture. Now, this one that I'm using is one that I got offline, sorry, online, 
off the internet. Uh, it's a studio lighting setup. So this is, well, maybe this will want to crash it. Anyway, these are just like studio basic lighting sort of looks, all right? Now, oh, I think it is gonna crash the computer. I didn't save. Don't crash. I really should not have clicked that button. It should be a fail safe or something that'll cancel this out, not just crash. Huh? Oh, oh, we're back. No. Okay, turn it back off. No. All right, I'll just pause this. All right, stupid blender was not cooperating. Anyways, I'm using one called 18.hdr, right? These aren't mine. They're available under the Creative Commons license. You can get it off blenderguru.com. You can download it right there. Anyways, once you've added this, this is what it's gonna look like. And this is the reason we're adding it. Okay, why don't wait for it to load, wait for it to load. Hit five, and look at that. So this is like, it's a it's faking a studio lighting setup. So that pack, that studio lighting HDR set, is uh, just a, a variety of different sort of studio lighting setups. And I found this one to work pretty good for this type of scene. So you can see now the rim actually has some light to it and it looks kind of nice. So um, as well as that though, we're not just gonna have that lighting, we're also gonna add in some physical lights as well. Let's just drag that across there. And I'm gonna use a plane. I'm gonna set this plane to be an emission shader. And this is gonna be just a typical sort of big old studio light over in the background, about there. All right, something like that. I'm gonna scale that up so it's nice and long. I wanna get a nice long streak down the edge of this beer glass. So let's set the strength of that to seven. There we go, now we can kind of see it, that's cool. And uh, I'm gonna make it slightly blue. The reason for that is that uh, light like this uh, especially studio lighting, it's never really pure white. It always, if it looks white, it generally has a little tint of blue to it. So that just uh, a little tip there for you for future reference. So that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna add another one on this side. And about there, uh, pretty good. And let's shrink that down. This one is just gonna be on the top sort of rim of the glass there. It's not gonna be as strong. So set it to a, its own separate material and let's set the strength of that to two. So I was just adding a little touch there on the edge there. And uh, the HDR lighting setup does help, which is why we added it, of course. I'm not just wasting time. <laughs> um, we are, we're adding extra lights to uh, make it look more realistic. Um, essentially, just, I don't know, personal preference, I found this sort of lighting setup to look pretty good. Okay. Cool, that's lighting done. So now we can actually get into the fun stuff, which is the beer itself. What's a glass without some beer, eh? eh? All right, so for the, for the liquid, I apologize for my terrible jokes. Um, for the liquid, some people will say that the way to make liquid in a glass is to set a separate material. Like you do something like this, you select that part of the mesh and then you make it a separate material. Don't do that, that's a terrible idea. It will just look awful. Um, I don't know why, okay? I know you're expecting a why, but it will just look awful, all right? What you wanna do is you wanna make it a separate object. So selecting the inner parts, like I have done right now, just the inner parts, hit Shift D, and then hit P to make it a separate object. Now I didn't select the whole thing all the way up to the top there because this is where I want my liquid to sit, okay? You can go higher or lower depending on what you want. I wanna make it look like someone's had a sip out of mine, all right? Um, all right, so this top part here, we wanna close this off because it's, uh, it's gotta be liquid, right? So we're gonna close it off the exact same way we closed off the bottom by scaling inwards, right inwards, doing some loop cuts and then F in the middle. All right. And because, as a lot of people will tell you on the internet, a lot of people will tell you this, there's surface tension, which is that when liquid sits in a glass, it's sort of like the edges of it are slightly higher, right? So I'm just grabbing this edge here and just moving it up a little bit. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Um, yeah. 
hit shift E and drag it all the way out to add a, uh, a crease on that so you can actually see it. There you go. So that's what you're trying to uh, get. So a little bit of surface tension like that and you can move that out so it looks a little better. And there we go. Okay, great. All right, now, this is the interesting part. Now, there's a great article by Greg Zahl uh, on uh, adaptivesamples.com, I think. I'll put the link up there for you, um, which has an article telling you all about fluid and how you're supposed to properly make fluid in a glass, which I highly recommend checking out. It tells you all about the uh, space of air and liquid and whatever else. But the conclusion is this. What you need to do with your liquid is make sure that it is in between the edges of this glass here. I've got too much on my plate. Let's optimal display. There we go. So you want to make sure that this is square in the middle of the width of your, uh, the thickness of your, your glass. So it's right in the middle of it. Okay. And it has to be that way all the way down. So you want to scale everything ever so slightly. like that, just so that it's a little bit thicker than the inner layer of the glass, but not thick enough that it's bulging through the outer edge. Hope I'm making that clear. All right, so from the outside, it looks fine. And on the inside, it should uh, it should be in the, like in between the, uh, the thickness there, okay? Now, to test this out, oh, actually, and before you move on, this is very important, hit Control N, which is the same as uh, hitting, uh, <laughs> recalculate normals okay because we want to make sure that the normals are facing outwards like that um, despite what that article will tell you the one I just referenced um, you don't want this part here to be flipped in or anything like that because it will not work I've tried it it just will not work with cycles volumetrics which we're gonna to get to in a sec so okay volumes are the right way now let's get into the material of this liquid node editor now this is actually really easy to do um, just uh, make a separate material for this glass here and let's just call this uh, beer because we're going to keep this glass shade of the way it is and we're going to add in a volume absorption node um, so there's volume scatter there's volume absorption volume scatter is when you want light to go through something and sort of keep its illumination keep its um, what do you call it luminescent uh, like light going through fog for example or uh, light going through a cloud that's when you use volume scatter volume absorption is when light is absorbed into it so things like hard plastic um, uh, liquid for example so basically when light will taper off like uh, if it's in a lake or something like that the further you go into the subject the the darker it will get that's when you use volume absorption so liquid we're using volume absorption and look at that we've got a little handy warning isn't that cool that was added in recently uh, or not so recently but you know last few months um, we can't use it on the GPU so switch over now to CPU and then once you've done that connect this volume into the volume input okay so see that you've got the glass which is going into the surface input and then the volume absorption which is going into the volume input okay cool now um the color of this now this i had a lot of people on twitter telling me it was too yellow other people telling me it was too orange it's really up to you uh, if you go into google you type in beer you will see there is a variety of different colors. You've got like thick, dark beers like Guinness. You've got orangey ones, almost reddish ones. And then you've got some ones that look like piss, really. So we're going for a yellowy orange one. So I find a value, uh, a hue of 0.13 works pretty well. And the saturation as one. The density I'm going to set to be 65, okay? This is one you want to experiment with, of course, but I found through experimentation myself, 65 works well. By the way, the saturation does the exact same thing as the density. So if you set this saturation to be 0.5 and then you turn this up to be uh, double what that is, then that would have the exact same result. So keep the saturation at, uh, at one and then uh, just fiddle around with the density until it looks cool, all right? So density 65, we are now ready to do some rendering. Uh, let's, oh, I haven't saved it yet. Let's save over that one. That was my last tutorial attempt that failed. 
All right, um, let's change the tiles to be 16 by 16 so it renders faster. And let's give it a quick render, see how it goes. All right, that actually looks pretty good. Excellent. Now, if you find, if you get any sort of rings or artifacts or anything around here, um, which I have done in the past, what that means is that your liquid is uh, is either too far in or it's too far out. It's overlapping one of the two. It needs to be squarely in the middle, which can be hard to do. Um, but uh, if you have that, that's the reason why. So you have to fiddle with it until, uh, until you get it just right. Now, in our render, I'll pull that back up. You can see that at the top here, it looks like some sort of bubble looking effect. Um, now that's because we want this part right here. You can make that a separate object if you want, but what I've found, because I want to keep everything the same object, is uh, if you just select this edge here, you can turn off the normals, select the edge there, and then hit Control E, and then select Mark as Sharp. Then add in an edge split modifier, turn off edge angle so it's only now applying it to just that edge right there and that's essentially now going to do the exact same thing it is let me just do another render here it's going to treat that that top part that surface tension like it's a completely separate object essentially so look at that that looks uh it looks pretty cool i think oh yeah yeah you've got a little bit of uh it looks almost like something weird is going on there. Like it's not going through the glass, or it is. You know what? Let's just make it a separate object. Let's just see if that has any effect. I did some tests earlier, and I found that it didn't really make a lick of difference. But maybe in this case it is. So I'm rendering it to a different slot. This is handy when you want to uh, have a look at different settings. No, it's the exact same thing. Oh, hang on. Almost. Uh, okay, so maybe making it its own separate object, it does have a slight difference. But anyways, um, okay, so that's the surface tension, that's the middle part of the liquid. Now, um, let's do the foam. Hey, the foam, the least fun part. <laughs> no, the foam is cool, it's just hard to get the material right. Um, I spent a couple of days, no, actually a whole day just on the foam yesterday, all right? So, I'm going to take this top part here, I'm just going to duplicate it and save myself some time. And then move this up, remove that material, and I'm now going to, hmm, what did I do? Let's go, extrude, yeah, there we go, okay, I sort of forgot what I was doing there for a minute, isn't that weird? Okay, so, I'm taking that whole thing, I'm hitting S, Z, minus one which is now basically mirrored it, okay? So if you now have a look at just this object, we have what looks like a disc, okay? So that's exactly what we want. Turn off the edge split modifier, okay? So this is gonna act as our foam. Now, it's up to you how much foam you use. A lot of different beers will have a, you know, a whole head of foam. Um, others will have uh, you know just a little bit resting on the top there. It's really up to you. This is the amount that I'm using. You can uh, do whatever you want. It's kind of funny when people, you know, have a look at your render and go, the foam is not enough, or uh, the uh, the color of the beer is wrong. It's like, well, maybe you only drink one type of beer, perhaps. <laughs> That's my only guess, because there's a lot of different types of beer. As I learned, I'm not an alcoholic. I don't even like beer, actually. Okay, what I've just done there when I was just rambling turned on random proportional editing fall off and now we've got like this ruffled up kind of surface all right now for this middle part here i'm going to turn on smooth fall off and now i'm going to smooth out just the middle there like that okay so from the front it sort of looks a little bit bumpy like that and you can do a little bit more tweaking if you like um, let's bring back the whole thing um, like you can sort of pull that down, oh, not that far. Okay, uh, maybe this one here as well. Yeah, and you can just uh, experiment with it, add more or less bumps 
whatever you like. Okay, it's really only visible from the front there. That's why I'm only fiddling with that part. Okay, so that's all good. Let's bring back everything else. Okay, so for the material, the tricky part. This is one that took me forever to figure this stuff out. Um, as I said yesterday, I just spent forever trying to do the foam and uh, yeah, wasn't really getting anywhere. Anyways, today I sort of nailed it. So this is what we do. We're gonna keep the diffuse shader, but we're gonna combine it with a subserve scattering node. Now you might be wondering, Andrew, why aren't we using the very newly added volume scatter node? You can do that if you like. You can go ahead and uh, drop that in and have some fun with that. I have found it doesn't work that well for this type of thing. This is really what subsurf scattering is for. It's for something like this. It's like a it's a liquid real type thing in which light is going to pass through it. Have a look at some reference photos. You'll see it. It's like brightest where the light is and then it slowly fades off. This is really what subsurf scattering is for. So that's why we're going to use it. We're combining it with the diffuse shader and we're going to use add so that we get the benefits of both diffuse and subsurf. Now the downside to using the add shader is that it basically multiplies the brightness. So instead of this just looking like white, it's gonna look like blinding, Colgate, extra whitening, extreme, really bad white. So you wanna turn this down to be a, a bit of a gray color. And then through the power of the ad shader, it's now gonna make it look white, okay? So let's just, uh, let's have a look at that. Let's test if my theory is correct. Let's move that to its own layer. And uh, let's move the lighting, everything else to a layer down there. Okay. And let's give a preview render. And there we go. Okay, that's actually not too bad. That was pretty good first go round. How about that, huh? Uh, oh, where's the sampling? Gosh, these menus, huh? Huh? A little bit more. Yeah, there we go. So that looks pretty much like foam. It's not too bad. Oh, the scale, of course. You gotta get the scale right. There we go. Now it's uh it's too white. Alright. So let's turn the uh diffuse one down. Because the diffuse is sort of like the outer surface of it, so I'm turning that one down first. And then this volume uh the color there. So this scale is sort of like how big is your object? Uh, how quickly do you want the light to fall off? Leaving it at the default value of one is sort of good for like a real sized apple maybe, but not something like this. So you can see that now looks really a lot more like foam. Now you can add a lot more bumps. You can add bubbles to it like I did for my final render as well. Um, we're going to be adding bubbles later. So you just essentially repeat the same steps if you want. I'm going to leave this as is because it actually does look pretty fine. Um, as it is. So bringing back the glass. Now for the stuff, uh, the, the residue around the glass here, this is something that took me forever to figure out yesterday. And I was fiddling with particles and I was rendering forever. Um, as it turns out, the best way to do it is to actually use an image texture. So this is what we're gonna do. Take the inner part of the glass, uh, this one, uh, Mm, mm, mm. Oh, come on now. Don't be stupid. Come on. Yeah, there we go. All right. The inner part of the glass. Shift D, then hit P. So it's own separate thing. And then make sure the normals are actually pointing inwards, as they are. Okay. Now with this, what we're going to do is we're going to add a separate material to it. And we're going to call this beer residue. Now, as I said, the best way to do it is to use an image texture. Now, what we want to have is the effect of basically somebody's had a sip out of the beer and it's got uh, a little bit of the foam and the gunk still clinging to the outside of the glasses. As you will see when you have a look at uh, reference photos like these, for example, um, there's uh, a very different, varying different types of what can appear on the outside you know, in the residue. Um, I found... Uh, or actually through a lot of research and having a look at a lot of images, um, the if the glass has been cleaned properly, this is kind of cool. You'll know this when you go next time you go drinking with your friends, or most of you won't because you're probably still in school. Um, but 
beer that is in a glass that has been cleaned properly, uh, the whenever you have a sip, there'll be like a clear line of foam around where the foam used to sit. If the glass wasn't cleaned properly, then the foam will all slide down. So you won't actually get any residue on the glass. So what I did was I went into Photoshop and I painted this, this thing right here, which if we now go to the uh, image editor, I'm going to add a cut, uh, a seam, and I'm doing it deliberately on that edge there because that is where the camera won't see it. Okay, so add a seam right there. And then let's go unwrap. You can get this image, by the way, on blenderguru.com. And there we go. So this is it. Um, now you can see that it's sort of skewed, this uh, the shape of it. We want it to look like flat vertical line. So I'm going to use U, and instead of hitting unwrap, I'm going to select cylinder projection. Then once I've done that, it's essentially just a matter of making sure that this is roughly, you know, the size of these rectangles here are the size of these rectangles here. So a little bit of, uh, you know, stretching like that. Okay. Down to there. Okie dokie. Okay, cool. So that lines up pretty well. Now back to our node editor. So we added this as the image texture. Now to make this effect, um, so that we're, it's, we want the this part here to be invisible except for that image texture. So we're going to add in a mix shader and then combine that with a transparent shader. So we've got the diffuse with the transparent and a mix shader. And then we're going to take the output from our image texture, which is pure black and white, and put that into the factor input. So now if you go non-color data, and let's just have a look at that we should now see if everything has gone well ta -da! we should now see the uh, the foam now you can see that some parts of it look like they're hugging the edge of the glass which is good and then other parts aren't um, so actually I've never, I haven't really thought about this until now but I guess if the residue is on the inner part of the glass it shouldn't actually have, unlike the liquid, which needs to be in between it, it should actually be sort of on the inner part. So not actually against the glass. I'm gonna try that. All right. Um, because this has got a subsurf on it, it's kind of smoothed. Um, so we need to have, for this part here, we need to have an extra edge loop here, and then just scale this, uh, this extra piece down there inwards, all right? And now with that, I'm now gonna go Scale that in a little bit, just to about there. All right, now let's have a look at that. All right, this should hopefully show the residue about there. Actually, I think, yeah, that does make sense actually, because it would be on the inner part of the glass. It wouldn't actually be visible sort of on the outer part. Maybe, oh, I don't know now. I mean, you can have everything ready before a tutorial, and then as you're teaching it, you're going, hang on, is that actually right? I'm going to put it on the end part of the glass. You guys can argue in the comments as to which one is actually right. I don't have a beer next to me, so I can't actually tell you which is true. Anyways, I'm going with this one right here. Now, one thing to note, if you have a look at this, you will see that it is very, very noisy, unlike the rest of the render, which is fairly clean. The reason it is noisy is that the glass is uh, basically the light is passing through this glass and it's trying to cast shadows on everything inside the glass through the glass. So basically trying to, I don't know, create fake caustics or whatever it would be, would be doing. And that's almost never actually needed. So this is the way to, uh, to get around that. With our glass selected and the material, we're gonna add in a transparent shader with a mix shader. Drop this in there and then a light path node. Now this light path node, I don't have time to get into it because I'm already going over 40 minutes. Um, it, we want it to basically, we want to use the is shadow ray and is diffuse ray. So to combine those two, I'm going to use a math node, leave it set to add, combine the is shadow ray with the is diffuse ray, and then we're going to put that in there. So what's that now I'm going to tell Blender is that if whatever object it's hitting is, uh, 
if if it's a shadow which is being cast through it treat it like it's completely transparent if it's diffuse such as like this treat it like it is completely transparent everything else meaning whatever is viewable to the camera whatever is viewable uh, off a reflection treat it like it's actually glass but everything else is shadow ray and is that is going to be completed as uh, transparent okay so now uh if we give it a preview render we should see there we go Everything is a lot less noisy. The light's coming through a lot clearer. Everything's a little bit brighter. And uh, yeah, it's not the horrible noisy mess that it was earlier. Now, the light over here on this part of the froth isn't really getting the full effect as it is over here. Um, when in actuality, it really would in real life because the light also would be passing through the glass on this side as well. So the way to fix that is uh, essentially what we want to have is we want to have the diffuse shader, which is currently where all the light is coming from. Um, but we also want to have a, guess what it is, translucent shader. Okay, so the translucent allows light to pass through an object. So we're now going to use an add shader node, which means of course, when we do that, everything's going to be super bright. So let's turn it down again, let's go 0.5 and 0.5 on that one all right that is a little bit better there we go the lighting is coming through a little bit on that side and also we don't want the froth to look like uh i don't know someone squirted gif or you know guys know what gif is anyways toothpaste it looks really super hardcore caked on there uh like paint. i should just say paint um instead we want it to look like froth all right so we want to add in a transparent shader and mix it with everything else so we can just use this mix slider here so if you want more transparency you just turn that up and then if you want less you just turn it down so i think uh something like that i guess should be good for mine i actually did something a little bit even fancier and you don't have to do this um in fact i'd advise that you don't because this is just too much work um i used a noise uh, a noise texture and then I used uh, the noise texture to control this and what that does is it makes it look like there's actually little bubbles inside it uh, so let's just have a look at that and see how that looks yeah you can kind of see it maybe a little bit if you squint your eyes that's why I'm not really including it in the tutorial because it's I mean it's the result is pretty pretty small really you have to crank up the contrast and whatever yeah i didn't find it was that important so i just sort of uh, just sort of left it out but anyways you can fiddle with that if you want you're welcome to you can have a look at my uh finished file and go through that if you like but this is what we're doing so just a little bit of transparency like that so that it looks uh a little bit like froth maybe a little bit more and uh we are now good to go all right so what else is there left to do oh bubbles mm, the bubbles um, for the bubbles, uh, how do we do the bubbles? It's a good question. How do we do the bubbles? How do we do the bubbles? Uh, okay, let's do the actual bubbles that are floating up, and then after on, we'll do the bubbles that are caked on the bottom and the top there. So, for the bubbles that are floating up, what we want to do is we want to add a plane. All right, let's move this in. And on this plane, I'm going to subdivide it. I think it's not like I'm doing a magic trick. And now, close your eyes, count to three, and then, ooh, ah. All right, so I'm just making it so it sort of fills up the floor there. All right, it doesn't have to be exact. It's better if it's not, as they always say. Um, like this. Now, what we're going to do with this, the reason I'm using a plane instead of just using the base here, like I actually did for my first one, um, is that as somebody informed me on Twitter, Twitter is helpful sometimes, um, bubbles actually don't just rise in one big thing out of the floor, like everywhere. They actually come in streams. So bubbles come in thin little streams. So to do that effect, what we're going to do with this plane here is we're going to make uh, the bubbles come out of each one of these vertices. So instead of it just coming out of like everywhere and like this big tornado or whatever, it's come out of uh, yeah little, little uh, things. I don't know why the bubble streams do that. Maybe somebody can tell me in the comments why that is. I'd be kind of interested to know. Um, 
why don't they all just come out of everywhere at once? Um, how are bubbles formed? Hmm. I've got so many questions now. Nobody to answer them. If my dad was here, he would answer them. I don't know if any of you guys out there have teachers for parents. Both of my parents are teachers, which means a lot of pressure when you're in high school and uh, a lot of disappointment when you fail almost everything. <laughs> but anyways, one of the other things of having a parent, uh, both parents' teachers, is that uh, very quickly a conversation will turn into a lecture. So you try and bail out of that as quickly as you can. All right, so I got the bubbles coming out of the faces. We want them to come out of the vertices. So click verts, and now they're coming out of the vertices. Look at that, they look like bubbles, don't they? Isn't that cool? Is it just beer that does that, or is it all fizzy drinks? I think it's just beer, but I could be wrong. Um, I'm pretty sure champagne does it as well, doesn't it? All right. Okay, is that enough? That's not enough. Let's go 6,000. 6,000 bubbles. And instead of having it as like, you know, stream like that, that, that looks a little bit too fake. It does have a little bit of waviness to it, which is why I'm going to use some brownie in motion. Okay, so now you can see it has a little bit of a bubble to it. Now it's coming out the top, which is too far. Now you could add something here to block the particles so that they die when it hits something. Or you could just do the lazy man method, which is what I'm going to do right now, and just go... Frame 43, the particles reach the foam, so the lifetime of the particles should be 43. So now when you play it back, look at that, problem solved. Or even better, let's go 42, because I think it was coming out the top of the foam. There we go. Ta -da. Now if, you, if it looks a little bit too uniform as well, you can delete some of these vertices, maybe subdivide it. Oh, I think I did too much. But you know, you want it to look sort of random. Oh yeah, I think I did too many vertices. All right. Anyways, that looks pretty good. Okay, you can have as little as or as many as we want. Now we want this to be actual bubbles, little tiny balls that are visible. At the moment, they're going to render as a halo, which means in cycles nothing. So if you hit render, you wouldn't see anything. So it needs to be a separate object for each of these little tiny dots. So the separate object is going to be an icosphere. An icosphere is like a really nice low poly uh, thing whenever you want to use a sphere, but you don't want to use a sphere because it's too many polys. So use a subdivision level of one, which is super duper duper low poly, which is fine. And then the size of it, we're going to use one millimeter. Okay, really, really tiny, and then make sure you set the shading to smooth. Now for this uh, little bubble here, I'm gonna use a glass shader, and I'm gonna just set the IOR as 0.5, at 0.1.45, okay? Now before any of you leave a comment saying that it should actually be one or something like that to match the IOR quality of air, I tried that and the bubbles are almost invisible. If you actually have a look at reference photos of real bubbles, they look actually more like tiny metallic balls, like almost entirely shiny because it's air which is going through the liquid which we don't have. Like this is a fakery of liquid, right? So we have to basically fake the effect of an actual bubble. So yeah, that's why we're using a one point four five for those of you that don't know what i'm talking about don't worry it's nerd stuff so in the render to make it render as those little icospheres go object and then set it to icosphere and now look at it the little dots are icospheres you want to crank this up to be uh whatever you think say when Let's go, yeah. and also turn the randomized size up as well, so you get some different sized bubbles. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, now you want to make sure that emitter is turned off, otherwise you get this horrible little grid appearing on the bottom there. Uh, but other than that, I think it is pretty good. All right, so now for the bottom and the top, we should have some bubbles that are forming, like the bottom of a beer or a soft drink, whatever. There's always a little bit of bubbles that are at the bottom, and there's some that are resting at the top as well. So to do that, we're going to add another particle system. Hair, and 
object, set it to icosphere. Oh, there's too many, too much stuff is going on. Let's uh, optimal display. All right. Okay, now we want these particles to only appear on the base here. So what I'm going to do, actually, you know what I'll do? Because you want it to actually be resting just above the glass, not actually underneath the glass. Otherwise, it will look kind of weird. I'm going to hit Shift D on this. So I've just got the base here. Then I'm going to hit P, make it its own separate object. And then I'm going to remove the particle system from this main mesh here. So I've now just got this. And now I don't have to do any weight painting or anything like that. I can now just place that slightly above the glass like so and make sure that emitter is turned off as well and then once we've done that the same thing for this part right here in fact i can reuse that particle system i'm going to guess that it's that one am i right yes make sure you check use modifier stacker if you ever have that problem that's a bug brett said he was going to fix it it's still broken brett no sorry um uh yeah so that's fine like that uh let's turn the randomized size up and the size of them up as well because they're a little bit bigger okay and i think it is now ready to render all right give it a render i'm gonna go a little bit more with the samples let's go 50 and let's see how that looks excellent renders 42 seconds not bad cool problems Yes, the residue is going underneath the foam. So let's fix that. Very easy to fix this one. We just take that and we move it upwards to be about there, I think. Is that about right? Yep, that's about right. And because I've done that, I also need to fix up, excuse me, I need to uh, fix up this part, the beer, um, the UV coordinates. I need to move it up very slightly. Oh, why is it freezing? Oh, for Pete's sake. Let me pause it again. Hey, all right, we're back. Um, yeah, because I move the coordinates, if you don't do this, um, then it's uh, what you'll have is a little bit of a squished looking render. So something like that is pretty good. Okay, other problems. What other problems did we spot there? Okay, the top of the glass looks good. The foam, pretty good, not too bad. I think there's probably too many bubbles along the top there. And the bottom there looks pretty good. Maybe the bubbles rising up could be a little bit bigger. So these ones here. You guys said when too early. Should have let me drag it out a bit. All right, these ones here. Um... Is it a separate object? No, that's just its own thing. Oh, I think I know what I did. Uh-huh, because it's using the same particle system. The top one here, I want the uh, the surface tension thing to render, but the bottom one here, I don't want that to render. So what I need to do is essentially make this its own separate particle system and then check render. And then we should see uh, the top of it actually rendering as it should, not this horrible mess that's there. Give it another render, let's see how it looks. And there we go. So that's it. That is a beer if I ever saw one. Um, the residue could maybe be toned down a little bit, um, but the rest of it is pretty good. Oh, one final thing. Uh, you want the focus to be on the beer. So artistically, the background is a little bit distracting. So to make the background out of focus, of course, with our camera here selected, we want to make it focused on the front part of this beer here. So. I'm gonna add in an empty. This is what the camera is gonna focus on, All right? Let's just drag that up, pull that out to there. And there we go. And now with our camera selected, set the focal point under depth of field to empty and then go F stop 12 I'm gonna use. All right, and now, oh yeah, might as well. Let's just turn down the residue of that. Ah, did you see what I just hit there? I hit Shift F3. That's a little shortcut to go to the node editor. Anyways, a um, bit more transparency, yeah. A little bit more, yeah. Okay. One final render. And there we go. Look at that. Finished and drinkable. So, um, yeah, where you go to from here is up to you. Um, 
you can uh, you can see there's a the foam is a little bit touching the glass there, but everything else is uh, pretty good. Um, I'm interested in seeing what you guys make, especially if you make some uh, cool, different looking types of drinks. Um, not just beers, maybe some cocktails. Maybe uh, that could be your homework. Pick a cocktail and make it. Um, or make a different type of beer. Um, and if you do, go to Blandy Guru, go to the post and post it in the comments below. Really like seeing what you guys make. Um, that's all from me. And uh, if you like the video, subscribe to me on YouTube. Um, anyways, that's it. See ya. Bye.